Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. November 17th, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Savage Nation, I'm in a combination of enraged and exhausted from what I see going on in this world. I knew the world was evil ever since I've been a little child, but I never knew it got as evil as it has gotten today. Now you say, what am I talking about? Oh, I don't care about Franken. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't care that the latest accusation is about emotional terrorism. You know, this nation is sophomore. I, to call this nation sophomoric would be too sophisticated to describe the level of intellect in this nation. No, we're not sophomoric. We're something below sophomoric. We're obsessed with sexual crap like this while the torture, the enslavement, the rape, of people is going on around the world, mainly in Muslim countries. And the slaughter of beautiful animals like elephants, lions, rhinoceros goes on in the name of compassion for uh, the animal. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I did it yesterday. Well, I'm going to do it a little bit today. Mr. President, you're just plain wrong. I woke up yesterday. I saw the Trump administration reverses the ban on the import of elephant trophies. Now, if you look at this, you say, well, that's a good thing. Why is it a good thing? It's not a good thing. No, it's not a good thing at all. For those of you who want to justify the hunting and killing of poor endangered animals who have no chance whatsoever with the tracking devices that you use, with the high-powered rifles that you use, with the local indigenous uh, hunters that you use, these elephants don't stand a chance. You're just a bunch of psychopathic murderers. And for you to say that you're doing the world and the elephants and the lions a humane service sounds very similar to me what the Nazis said they were engaging in the compassionate killing of the disabled. You're not helping anyone. You are all psychopaths and you're cowards on top of it all. The only thing I can remind you of is this. Ernest Hemingway, a great American writer, was a big game hunter. In the end, he shot his own brains out with a shotgun. That's because his whole life he was probably on the verge of suicide because of his internal demons. And so he took it out on poor, helpless animals in Africa. You better pray that you're not going to end up like Ernest Hemingway with your own head on a wall. It gets worse. There are big game farms here in America, in Texas in particular. You can show pictures of it if you'd like to see it. Go to michaelsavage.com. You want to get sick today? Go ahead. Make my day and get sick. You will see lions in a large corral waiting to be hunted by cowardly men who come there and pay a fee just to shoot them. They're raised to be killed like a sheep. What do you say about a thing like this? How can you still back a Trump administration? that would reverse a ban on the importation of elephant trophies. How? Is there no point at which you will finally say enough is enough? I am convinced that the president doesn't even know this happened. I am convinced that the stereotype of the ugly Republican on steroids is not even something they're aware of in the White House. But everything the left says about the insensitive, earth-destroying, animal-destroying, oafish Republican is coming to fruition all in one, one move. Mr. Trump, who advised you on this? You still have time to reverse this order and restore common decency. Not everything that Obama did was wrong. This is something that Obama did that was right. Mr. Trump, stop the importation of elephant trophies, lion trophies, and stop it now. I will tell you right now, Mr. Trump, if you do not do this, you will be not only a one-term president, you'll be gone before the end of the term because you will lose the entire 
independent vote. You'll lose all the women. You'll lose the independent animal-loving voter. You see, these restrictions were created in 2014 because the African elephant population had dropped. The animals are still listed in the U.S. Endangered Species Act, which requires the U.S. government to protect endangered species in other countries. We now have in certain regions of Africa an overpopulation of elephants because of conservation efforts. That's a good thing. But this does not justify the hunting and killing of them. Remember Donald Trump? We are the elephant. I am the elephant. You are the elephant. And when we lose our compassion for the world's most noble creature, who will be next? Will we start culling the human herd, saying there's overpopulation as well? Becoming so insensitive to life itself? Well, many believe we're doing that just now by killing the unborn. We are desensitizing ourselves to the taking of life. And Mr. Trump, insensitivity leads to brutality. We need to get back to a respect for life. Mr. President, you're just plain wrong on this. The lesson that I'm trying to teach you today, all of you who are listening, and there are millions of you, believe me, millions, if you think this is a marginal show, you're making a huge error. The lesson of respect for life goes back all the way to the beginning of the Bible in Genesis. I write about it in a chapter called Dominion in God, Faith, and Reason. I'm not going to read that to you now. I'm not in the mood. But dominion over all things on earth does not mean hunting and killing innocent animals. It does not mean that at all. Dominion means conservation. It means conserving them. It means protecting them. And when I looked at those pictures of the lions in a pen waiting to be killed by some cowardly, impotent old men who come there and shoot them in cold blood, where the lion doesn't stand not only a chance, the lion is sitting there waiting to be killed like in a concentration camp. I got so angry and at the same time so sad at a feeling of helplessness that the president I worked so hard to elect would reverse the ban on the importation of elephant trophies. I went out on my deck and I threw some bread to some seagulls. I told you I do this on a regular basis. And I looked at them and I just threw some bread and I watched the animals fight over a scrap of bread. And all I could think of is how innocent animals are and how the survival of the fittest permits them to go on. But what does it tell us about we, we as a species when this is not representative of the survival of the fittest? Is this the survival of the fittest, to go hunt an innocent elephant? By the way, an elephant is a social creature. You're not just killing that mother elephant. You're not just killing that baby elephant. You're not just killing that father elephant. You're breaking the, the animal's hearts. You think they have no hearts? You think they have no feelings? It means that you are a big adult than the people in talk radio who say that animal rights activists are all fools. You're a big adult than they are. I can go on and on on this. I don't know if I will. I'm so angry right now that I'm reaching a point of depression. My, You know what depression is, don't you? It's it's anger turned, turned within. It's when you can't express your anger well enough that you basically become depressed. I'm sick over this. I'm sick over it because here we are, the so-called Republican conservative side of the aisle, if you want to call it that. I've never been a Republican. I've always been an independent. Here we are on the other side of reality, the other side of decency, the other side of right, patting ourselves on the back like we're right. No, we're wrong. And the president has the power to reverse this insanity. Obviously, there are people within his own administration who are doing things, not only on this front. You want me to get into environmental issues? Good, I'll get into them. Remember the old eagle that was dying in America because their eggshells were cracking? That's nothing to you because you, you're a big Republican. I have a Gulf Stream. I crap on America. Ha, 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 ha. Huh? You don't care about the eagle. You are the eagle, you fat slob. You are the damn eagle. And when you poison the eagle, you poison yourself, you schmuck. That's what the ecosystem is called. Something you didn't learn in shock jock school. You are the eagle schmuck. And when you poison the airs, waters, and places, and the eagle shell becomes too thin for the bird to be born, you're killing not only the eagle, but the entire ecological chain. Something you didn't learn in shock jock school, putz. So what happened? Well, we banned lead. And so the eagle shells became strong again. Eagles started to proliferate. Guess what just happened? 
the very same psychotics who Trump appointed to the Interior Department, the very same rapacious killers who have now taken over our Interior Department, have now just permitted lead bullets to be used in hunting again, which means the eagles will die again. We're going back 50 years. Not everything that Obama did was wrong. In fact, it took years to save the animals, years to protect the environment. And I warned you, I warned you in Trump's war as I warned you in God, Faith, and Reason. You know, a rush to undo some of the insanities of Obama, let's not throw everything out. Because some of the achievements were grand and so important. And they took years for decent people to get these things in place. Do you understand what I am saying to you, you oafish, dumb, fake conservative Republican who's not, you're nothing but a pig in Animal Farm, who you use your conservatism simply to make sure that no one gets a dime of your money? That's all it is. That's all. At the end of the day, what do you think it really is? You think they believe in all of these things? They're laughing all the way to the bank. They believe in nothing. Greed. Greed. Human greed, it's sickening. There's not a scintilla of compassion in most of these arguments. And let me repeat something else in case you missed it. Most of the arguments I hear in talk radio on any side of it are, I would say, sophomoric would be too sophisticated to describe the level of their arguments. Trump administration reverses ban on import of elephant trophies. Shame on you, Mr. Trump. Mr. President, you're just plain wrong. You have time to reverse this. You have time. You have time with the stroke of a pen to do something about this. Mr. Trump, I sent you a handwritten copy of uh, Trump's war, and I got a very nice signed message back from you from your private secretary where you signed the cover, and I was very happy that you did that. Mr. Trump, please read the inscribed copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Read one page. It wouldn't be too much for you. You can take time out from bashing Al Franken to read page 71 on Dominion, because I know that inside your heart you're a good man. And I write to you that there are some things in the Bible I don't happen to agree with, but there are some things in the Bible that I do agree with. According to Genesis, God told Adam and Eve the following. He said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. That does not mean kill everything on the earth. That does not mean harvest everything on the earth. That does not mean rape everything that crawls and flies and swims simply because people want to be a pig. That means that we must be higher than that. That means, Mr. Trump, it's in our best interest to conserve them for the future. That is the true meaning of exercising dominion. To ensure that all living things have the opportunity to flourish, which will allow human beings to benefit from them in the future. In doing so, Mr. Trump, we enable them to live the best life they possibly can in a world in which living things must consume other living things to survive. And we must not make them suffer when they are slaughtered, Mr. Trump. That's all in dominion in your signed copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I pray that someone gives you the book. Thank you very much. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. So I wonder, what did Trump trade? What did Trump trade in China to let this happen? Because most of the uh, ivory goes to China. You see, there's such an advanced civilization in China that they need to show ivory on their uh, mantles. They're just such an advanced civilization. I love all of the liberal Americans who somehow think that all countries on Earth are more sophisticated than we are. But in China, you see, they love to show the ivory to show how rich they are. 
I understand some trade deals were done with China. I suppose one of the trade-offs was, go ahead, you can import the ivory, and we'll let the cowardly, impotent men who hunt these animals, uh, who have no chance whatsoever, go and kill them. Everyone will make money, and it's all about money. That's all that matters, the almighty dollar. One hunter who refused to be named is seen shooting a crocodile. It should be an easy target, but the hunter cannot manage a clean kill. It is dragged to the bank and waits for death. The hunter then shouts, let me put my beer down, before firing a bullet into its brain at close range. Oh, yeah, MF, he cries. I'm done for today. It's party time, boys. The hunter still wants to kill a warthog, a baboon, and a bush pig before he leaves and finds time to share a creepy kiss with his uh, girlfriend while posing beside a dead wildebeest. It is all legal with 150 farms in South Africa holding permits to breed lions for trophy hunting. Breed lions for trophy hunting. Breed lions for trophy hunting. That allows hunters to select the gender, size, and color of their animal as well as species. So that's it. That's the whole story. Uh, I, I remain speechless on this. I mean, I, I won't say another word on it. You understand what I'm saying to you? What more can I do? This show is heard on almost 300 radio stations. I have a huge streaming presence. It was number one as a streaming show in the country. It's now one or two. It doesn't much matter what it is. The numbers are pretty high. I didn't even know they were this high until just I just got an email about 30 minutes ago. I think I can disclose this to you. I have over 3 million people last month, 3 million people listening to my show on demand in the last month. I realize it's not that big. It's pretty big by comparison in some ways, isn't it? So a lot of people listen to the show and get direction from the show. And I'm, I'm appealing to all of you to appeal to President Trump to reverse the reversal on this killing of animals in Africa. That's all I'm saying. Make it simple. And make it real simple. Make it real simple. Not everything that Obama and Obama's people did was wrong. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Um, 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 uh. Man is such a piece of garbage. Mankind is so evil, it's unbelievable to me. Donald Trump sparked condemnation after allowing big game hunters such as his sons to import the heads of elephants into the U.S. The president overturned the ban brought in by his predecessor, Barack Obama, in 2014. Trump's reversal comes despite the animals still being listed under the Endangered Species Act. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said it will begin issuing permits for elephant trophies from Zimbabwe and Zambia. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, let me take a couple of calls, and I'm going to play something very special for you. It's a trailer from the film Trophy, a documentary that explains to you what's going on with these big game animals and what it means to you, whether you hunt or not, in terms of the, the desensitization of the human, the human race. You understand what I'm saying to you? J on WKZO. I guess that's in Michigan, right? Line six, go ahead, Jay, you're on the air. Yeah, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Say, uh, I've been a listener of yours kind of off and on for many years, and I say the vast majority of the time I don't agree with you at all, but I'm open to your opinion. But I'm really happy that you are addressing this issue uh, with the uh, re-allowing the importation of uh, trophies, you know, elephants, lions, and such, endangered species, um, I'm, I'm just really pleased that you're taking this on. And, uh, yeah, but this is, you, Jay, here's the thing you should know. What's that? I, uh, I'm not new to this subject. I've long been an animal rights activist. I've oh, donated okay. significant money right. to the Gorilla Fund, to the Elephant Fund, and it's gotten worse, not better. So I think this is only coming up now because Trump just reversed what took 15 years to put in place. Trump just reversed it. And I'm not going to sit here and say whatever he does is right. I'm sorry. Sometimes things happen that are wrong, and this is wrong. Yeah, and I think that's probably what I appreciate about you uh, is that, that independence. Because I, I, there will be other uh, people on the radio that will uh, 
figure out some way to justify this. And oh, they will. I know what they're going to do. Those who have less than a sophomoric understanding of anything besides their own uh, accountant's uh, uh, balance sheet will say that it's perfectly fine because it permits them to uh, save the herd. Uh, it keeps the herd alive. It's all lies. It's all bull crap. Jay, I'm going to explain that in a minute. I'm going to send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Maybe you'll enjoy it. I want you to listen to wildlife conservationist, conservationist Jeff Corwin who tells you that the elephant population is under duress. It is being hunted to near the brink of extinction. Listen to O2. The black market wildlife trade around the world is a $20 billion a year industry. The elephant population is under duress. It is being hunted to near brink of extinction on our current course for the ivory trade. The population in Africa has plummeted in a decade by 30%. Yep. So there are good people. You know, I, I have someone I know very well who I respect very much who says, what's the point of trying to save anything because they're all doomed? I don't take that, uh, that, that, that attitude. There are people who have devoted their lives to single species such as geese. And you know, look, geese? You ever see a documentary on how far geese fly, how many thousands of miles? These noble, these <laughs> noble animals, geese, will fly against winds and currents over the Himalayas expending the last ounce of energy in their bodies to get over those mountains on their migratory patterns. If you watch it, and you're not awed by life itself, and it doesn't inspire you, then you're dead. You're dead inside. You're nothing. You're a cinder, a cinder of a human being, to see an animal struggling like this to get where it goes. And I think we as a human species, being the most dominant, the most powerful, the most intelligent, if you want to call it that, have an obligation to protect these animals and that's what I'm trying to tell you I'm trying to in, induce in you this idea it's well enough to own a dog or a cat or a bird and take good care of it that's beautiful that brings us back to the animal self within all of us that's why we love our dogs that's why we caress our cats because it reminds us that we have not transcended the zoological order ourselves that we are still flesh and blood and bone and sinew and nerve and we are mortal, just like our little animals are. That's why we love them so much. They remind us of our mortality, and we take good care of them, better care of them than any country on earth here in America, because we are the most compassionate nation on earth. And that's what I see when we, the most compassionate nation on earth, would reverse an order like this. In order to cater to the wildlife trade and to the greedy pigs who buy the ivory, the psychos, is sickening, by the way. So now I want to play for you. Um, the official trailer for Trophy, a documentary that takes aim at big game hunters. It's only two minutes long. Listen carefully, please. I've been a hunter my whole life. I lost my dad a few years ago, and he was a hunter. I think that he would be really tickled to be able to tell the people back home at the coffee shop that his son is out hunting a lion. The Safari Club International Show is the largest hunting convention in the planet. Poachers will shoot every last one because there's a commercial-driven desire. How much for that sucker? 35, 35, I have the recipe to save the rhino from extinction. Sell the horns, keep the rhinos alive. Commodification of wildlife. Life. What a vision of nature that will be. They like to talk about conservation. They're just greenwashing. They enjoy killing. This is my trophy, and there's not any bureaucrat that can take it away from me. We must understand there comes a point in human evolution when we must evolve in our observations about not only ourselves or the earth or the cosmos, but about animals too. They're not all there for our pleasure or just to kill and eat them. That's not what having dominion means. We have dominion over many things that we don't necessarily consume to the point of destroying them. What do you think crop rotation is for? And things of that nature. It's all about conservation. Conservation. And it's not inconsistent for a person to be a political conservative and a conservationist. In fact, they're unified. They're brother and sister issues. Conservation is not an issue that should be controlled by the so-called radical left. We should control that issue. But the brother, and, the brother and the sister have another sibling, the soul. Being a conservationist is truly the way to follow God's command in Genesis to exercise dominion over all living things. That's in God, faith, and reason. You see why the book was written? Do you understand that there's a meaning for it other than just to sell a book? 
and buy a, a new gold necklace. I don't own any gold necklaces, by the way. Do you understand I'm trying to get messages out to the world and maybe by some quirk of fate this will happen? You know, I'm reminded of something else. The Native Americans here in America, in the early 1970s, I was fascinated by the lore of the Native Americans with regard to their knowledge of the of the plants and the animals, the earth, the fishing, the hunting, the collecting medicinal plants in particular. And as I as I traveled and researched various tribes in America and their practices, I, I came across something that I've never forgotten all these years. My first book on this subject was called Earth Medicine, Earth Foods, published in 1972. And I remember sitting up late at night till 2 in the morning writing this book. And a professor, I was working for a PhD in another field, but I was writing, it was my first commercial book. I had a young wife and child at home, and it was about midnight. And he actually called my office and he said, Michael, go home. You have a family. I got lost in what I was doing. I was so wrapped up in this. And I remember reading, I don't know which tribe it was, that when they went out into the field to look for a particular medicinal plant to heal something, there weren't a lot of them after all, it was a very limited number of uh, examples of that particular species that had medicinal properties. Let's call it whatever, the guru plant. They were looking for the guru plant. Well, they go out in the forest looking for the guru plant to harvest the plant, to find the medicine, and to cure something. And in this tribe, when they came upon the first member of that species that they found, the guru plant, they didn't just, like pigs, pick it and pluck it and run back to the village and use it. They walked past it, and they looked for the next uh, sample to pick it. Now, why did they do that? Why did they have the wisdom to not pick the first one? Because the first one could have been the last one. I learned something by that. I learned about the, 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 the worship of the earth, this, how the Native Americans had a sacred understanding of all things living, as brutal as they were to each other, as brutal. And believe me, I'm not talking about the noble savage here. I know very well that it was not the noble savage in that regard. But the wisdom of uh, the collection of that plant was, was something I've never forgotten. Do we have that wisdom here in America? What's interesting to me is I live in San Francisco, as you know. That's where I love it. I've been here forever since 74. This bay was once perfectly blue long before I got here. And there was shrimp harvested up in uh, a region of near San Rafael when the Chinese had a place called China Camp. They actually had shrimp farms up there. Well, you don't raise shrimp in this water anymore. It's toxic and polluted. Well, as time went on, the water went from blue to gray. And by the 60s, the bay was completely polluted. It was poisonous to eat any fish out of the bay. But as a result of the of the work of the conservationists, and restrictions on what can be thrown into the water, the water has come back where the fish can be eaten again. That's an example of what conservation can do. And many of you don't understand that it's not all or nothing. You understand what I'm saying? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I mean, I'll talk about pain for a minute. I never have endorsed a pain reliever, but now I am endorsing Relief Factor for a reason. I've studied and even written about the ingredients in this product. And you ask who should consider ordering Relief Factor? Anyone with pain that's keeping them from doing things that bring joy to their life, whether it's taking walks without pain, riding a bike, playing golf again without pain, even getting out of bed every morning without pain. And, of course, I can't guarantee that it's going to work. But I know you could very possibly be helped, like the thousands of other listeners who have been helped, simply by ordering the three-week quick start from Relief Factor for just nineteen ninety-five. And if twenty dollars is too much for you, then you must not be in much pain. But if pain is keeping you from doing the things you love to do, a twenty-dollar investment to see if you can lower or eliminate your pain is not much at all. Please try the three-week quick start. See for yourself at relieffactor.com. Relieffactor.com. 
I remember when I was a kid, again, I'm going back to, maybe I'm, I, as a child, again, a lot of my ideas were formed as a child. I remember one rainy afternoon in, in the August, up in the Catskill Mountains in New York, there was a thing called a bungalow colony, long extinct. And it's where the families from the steamy streets of New York would go, and they'd rent cottages all in one little bungalow colony. Each family would get their own little uh, bungalow, and then there'd be a common hall, and I loved it because it was sort of going back to a village that I never thought existed. But it was a beautiful thing. But on the weekends when my father would come up, because he had to work during the week, he'd make the long drive from uh, New York, uh, they would show movies. And one of the movies that they showed, remember that? This was before video and showed it on a projector, was a movie about a hunter called Frank Buck, and it was called Bring Him Back Alive. And the reason I loved that guy is because he didn't kill the animals. And my father would say, watch this hunter, Frank Buck. He, he captures the animal, and he brings them back alive. He doesn't kill them. And as a kid, most kids don't want to see big, beautiful animals shot and dying. They just don't want to do it. And so I used to watch that and love it. And then as I got older, I got into you know this and that. I remember seeing another movie later on in my life about the pygmies of Africa who would hunt elephants, pygmies, little guys, with spears. And they chased an elephant down, and like 20 of them would start stabbing this big creature, stabbing it in the eyes. They'd start with the anus, the genitals, until this big thing was immobile. And then it was on the ground. They just stab it and stab it and stab it until it was dead. And while it was still living, the pygmies would cut the guts open and literally go inside the elephant's entrails and pull out organs while it was still alive. I didn't know what to make of this barbaric practice of hunting. At least they were eating the animal. It's more than I can say for the white men who go over from America to kill these noble creatures. And that's why I say, uh, as I've asked today, do brave men hunt elephants? Should Trump prevent the importation of lion, elephant, rhinos, and other trophies? Of course he should. He should not reverse, permit the reversal of this order that was put in place by the U.S. <coughs> Fish and Wildlife Service uh, by the Obama administration. And I want to remind you, as this hour comes to a close, that you will hear them saying, the hunters, that they're doing the world in elephants and rhinos and lions a service, a humane service. They're not. That's the same justification that the Nazis used by saying they were compassionately killing the disabled, in my opinion. But then again, this is one man's opinion. This is the savage nation. I don't know what else I'm going to talk about today. Maybe I'll read from God, Faith, and Reason. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll talk about... No, you think I want to talk about that again? The sex crap? The sex-obsessed nation of ours? Another one was accused now? You know, Shakespeare knew what to do with the lawyers. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.